My name is Mark Johnson. I'm an application engineer with Keysight Technologies. And today I'd like to talk to you about how to measure phase noise using a real-time scope. So why would you use a real-time scope to measure phase noise when uh, typically phase noise is measured with a dedicated um, RF instrument such as a spectrum analyzer or perhaps a signal source analyzer or even a phase noise test system? Well, it could be that you just don't have budget for a dedicated instrument if you're only making phase noise measurements occasionally. Uh, perhaps you want to measure phase noise on a data signal. Or um, it could just be that your real-time scope has enough performance to be able to make the phase noise measurement on the device that you need to measure. So today I'll walk through a little bit about how to make a phase noise measurement on a real-time scope. The equipment we have here to demonstrate this capability today we have a 63 gigahertz real-time infinity oscilloscope. It has extremely low noise and low jitter performance, which is very important for phase noise measurements, of course. We have a, a source, which is a 50 gigahertz performance signal generator to generate a very clean, low phase noise sine wave. And also have an application running on a separate PC that I'll show later can be uh, used to enhance um, and change the view of the phase noise measurements relative to what you would see on the scope. Here we have a measurement of a 30 gigahertz sine wave from our PSG into the scope. You can see on channel one in the yellow, the 30 gigahertz sine wave. Now an oscilloscope measures jitter, not phase noise. And so we're able to make a clock TIE measurement, which you'll see in the purple, you see the trend versus time of the TIE measurement. That's the error relative to the recovered clock that we have on the oscilloscope. And the recovered clock in this case is simply the clock from the time base of the oscilloscope itself. So to get um, a spectral view, which we want for a phase noise type measurement, we can take an FFT, a Fourier transform of that time interval error trend, and we can get the spectral view, we call it the jitter spectrum. And that's shown in the pink below. And you can see that the jitter spectrum, for those familiar with a phase noise measurement, typically it's plotted in log frequency scale, whereas we're here we have a linear frequency scale. Um, and because we're doing a single FFT on each subsequent acquisition, you'll see the noise level is kind of bouncing around a lot. And where that noise level sits really depends on a couple of things. It depends on the acquisition depth of the oscilloscope. So if I change the acquisition here, we, you can see the noise level sort of drop. As I go to two mega points, if you look at the resolution bandwidth, we'll see as we increase the memory depth, the resolution bandwidth um, gets lower. So we can see more finely uh, the frequency components in our phase noise. To get uh, a more complete view of the, um, or a more stable view, sorry, of the noise of the jitter spectrum, we can turn on an average math function and so we can actually see the phase noise start to stabilize and get a more precise view of that phase noise. The jitter spectrum on the oscilloscope is the demodulated phase, and then we've converted it to the frequency domain, which gives us essentially the same information in different units as a single sideband phase, me phase noise measurement. The units are different on the jitter spectrum in that they're expressed in seconds, even though we have a logarithmic scale here, whereas a phase noise measurement typically is expressed in dBc per hertz. So that's dBc as d decibels relative to the carrier frequency. And then it's typically normalized to a one hertz window so that it makes it easy to compare with different clock frequencies and different resolutions. In this measurement setup, we've switched to a one gigahertz sine wave. Um, now we have a 63 gigahertz oscilloscope measuring a one gigahertz sine wave and all the phase noise frequency content is going to be between DC and 2 gigahertz now. So the maximum frequency offset that we could look at is 1 gigahertz. And if we have a 1 gigahertz carrier, that puts us as maximum of 2 gigahertz. So we're actually wasting a lot of bandwidth if we measure all the way to 63 gigahertz, which is going to introduce more noise. The Infinium line of oscilloscopes has a feature called bandwidth limit or about bandwidth reduction. So we can actually come into the bandwidth limit feature for the channel one and just limit the bandwidth to two gigahertz. That's going to apply a hard roll of low pass filter at two gigahertz to the acquisition hardware, 
which will substantially reduce the phase noise floor, a measurement floor of the instrument. In order to make more easily comparable phase noise measurements with other me phase noise measurement systems, uh, it's useful to have an application that can take the jitter spectrum measurement that we did and control the instrument in such a way that we get that averaging and we convert the units to dBc per hertz, etc. And we can do things like integration. Uh, there are a number of ways to do this. There's a vector signal analysis software tool that can be purchased with the oscilloscopes that can do that. But I'm going to show you here today an uh, application called Infinium Phase Noise, which is designed to be used with the Infinium uh, oscilloscopes to control the oscilloscope, to set everything up for you and make it much easier. So in the application here, I can connect to the oscilloscope. I'm using Ethernet, but you could use USB. And then we'll just tell the application which scope channel we're looking at, whether we want to use that bandwidth reduction we just talked about, um, where our clock frequency is, and also what is the minimum frequency offset that we want to measure phase noise to. So that's going to define how much memory we need to use on the oscilloscope. And memory depth is extremely important to be able to capture close-in phase noise as we have to capture a long enough time to be able to get those close-in frequencies. So in this case, we're going to measure the 1 gigahertz sine wave down to 10 kilohertz to start with. And we're going to use eight averages just to get a fairly quick measurement. So now we've kicked off a measurement. It's setting up the oscilloscope, looking for the optimal amplitude settings. It's scaling everything appropriately, and it will turn on the TIE measurement, the jitter spectrum, the averaging function, the bandwidth limit to optimize our noise floor, and then it's going to digitize the scope eight times so that we get that averaged result, and then it will pull the data back into the application and plot it in the preferred log frequency scale in units of dBc per hertz. So here we have the phase noise result. We have our log frequency scale here, our dBc per hertz scale. And we've also done some averaging in here to try and get a cleaner view, interpolation as well, to get a clearer view of where the phase noise lies. And we've also found the peaks uh, or spurs in the phase noise measurement. Um, we don't necessarily want to include those in, in any integration of the RMS jitter. But we can also set integration limits where we would zoom in over a certain uh, frequency range and integrate the jitter just over that range. So if I choose a frequency scale here of 100 kilohertz to 100 megahertz, we can calculate the jitter just over that region, which is highlighted by the shaded region below the curve. On the phase noise results tab, we can view the integrated RMS jitter over the integration frequency band that we just defined. And we can also see and sort by amplitude or frequency the list of peaks that we found, the spurs in the phase noise measurement. In this example, we're showing the effect of using the bandwidth reduction. So we set our bandwidth limit to 2 gigahertz, and we measured that same 1 gigahertz sine wave. And you can see the green is the measurement done with bandwidth reduction on. It tends to very much reduce the phase noise floor of the instrument at higher offset frequencies, has a minimal impact at close-in frequencies, and it's because it's reducing all that extra noise at high bandwidth that leaks into the measurement when we don't use bandwidth reduction. In this example, we used a five gigabit per second data generator to generate both a clock signal, which is in the blue here, and a PRBS pseudorandom bit streak sequence so that we could show that the real-time scope, because it's using clock recovery as the way to find the edges in the waveform, we can actually measure the phase noise on a data signal as well, which is an advantage over many of the RF instruments that measure phase noise. And you can see that the phase noise profile, since the generator is the same instrument, is very similar uh, until we get out to very high frequency offset. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like any more information about either the equipment or the applications that we've shown, please check out the links below and be sure to like and subscribe.